celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Deacon Joseph Gazakis. Let us begin by praying our Sacred Heart Morning Offering. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, the reparation of sin, and the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for peace and justice in the world, the well-being of my loved ones, and the intentions of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. Please stand as we greet our celebrant, Monsignor Clancy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good morning to everybody. We celebrate today the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and remember at this Mass that repose the soul of Deacon Joseph Kazakis. We prepare ourselves to celebrate that sacred mystery of the Eucharist by calling to mind our sins and asking for the Lord's mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you teach us to hear and understand God's word. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you cultivate in us the rich soil of listening hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end 
for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to O Lord. Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-four. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said them, to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables. Because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of these people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted. And I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but do not see and to hear what you hear, but did not hear. Hear then the parable of the soul. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. Who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty-four? The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome back. It's good to see our faces again, if we can see them. The first reading today depicts the efficacy of God's word, which when planted in the human heart, yields fruitful results. 
This fruitfulness of the word of God is also emphasized in the gospel reading where Jesus illustrated it by means of a parable. Now, as we well know, a parable is a method of teaching in which the lesson or the truth conveyed is hidden in short allegorical stories. We also know that Jesus frequently uses this teaching device. And so during a children's Bible lesson on the parables of Jesus, the teacher asked one young boy if he liked parables. Oh yes, I like them, the boy exclaimed. And the teacher was pleased. Which one of the parables do you like the best? The teacher asked. Oh, that's easy, the boy replied. I like the one where somebody was loafing and fishing. And so herein lies the problem with parables. For it is only those who understand them that can learn from them. Now, we know that the word was the church's way of describing God's communication with humanity. Notably, as we learn from St. John's Gospel, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And also, the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. This initial giving of God's word is a gift that keeps on giving. For as William Temple has stated, the divine and creative word was not just uttered once and for all, but it receives perpetual utterance in the radiation of light, in the movement of the stars, in the development of life, and in the conscience of humanity. In the first reading from the book of Isaiah, an illustration of the word as God's ongoing mode of communication to humanity is presented. And as we can see, this communication is not one dimensional. As we just heard, it shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the means for which I sent it. The word of God, therefore, is not just a communication from God to mankind. It also involves humanity's obedient response to God. My dear friends, God continues his creative work through his word, even to this day. Our duty as believers is to cooperate with God by listening to and by keeping his word. And we can do this fruitfully by allowing his will to be done in the ordinary events of our lives. For total submission to the will of God in all circumstances represents the fullness of grace as the Blessed Virgin Mary has exemplified for us. However, being submissive to the will of God will not be easy for us, as Jesus points out in today's Gospel parable. Subordinating of, the will of, uh, of one's will to the will of God will meet with many obstacles and discouragements. For while there will be many in the world who will receive and accept the word of God upon their first encounter with it, there will also be others who will understand and accept the word of God only gradually and with some difficulty. And there will still be others who cannot bring themselves to accept the word of God, let alone to believe it. And this is especially the case in times of difficulties. In these current times, the current times of pandemic, social and political upheaval. At these times, some in exasperation 
may even question the existence of God. Now, if understanding and accepting the word of God is so critical to humanity, the question that arises is this. Why do many of God's prophets, and even Jesus himself, choose to speak in parables, thereby making it even more difficult for some to grasp its meaning? This is the same question that the disciples of Jesus asked him in today's gospel. In response to them, Jesus quotes the passage from the prophet Isaiah, which says, It is to make the minds of the people dull, and to stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be converted. This implies that even though the people heard and understood the message from the prophet, they chose not to listen to it. By quoting this passage, therefore, Jesus is saying that many who hear his word will receive it in a similar manner, choosing to become hardened against the truth and determined not to follow it. Which begs the question, why? Why would anyone choose to ignore the truth? The simple answer is that there is nothing like the truth to turn people on or to turn them off. Indeed, some people tend to become hardened against the truth. Some people cannot handle the truth. They prefer to live in their own reality. If in doubt, Try making an argument with a fanatic. That is why Jesus spoke to the people in parables. He did this in order to ease them into the truth, to ease those whose hearts are hardened against it, instead of putting them in a position where they will not refuse to listen. And there's an important lesson for us here. We have all been called by the Lord to be his disciples. And today he is teaching the apostles and us the valuable lesson that the good news of the gospel should be presented to the people in such a manner that they will be prepared to receive it. In other words, to meet people where they are. For truth be told, we have no way of knowing how our words and actions will be received. And we may never know these things since they are known to God alone. But as most things with God, it may happen that the most unseemly, the most apparently inept and imperfect of us, may be for someone else a crucial vehicle for the communication of God's word. What, then means, what this then means is that communicating God's word is a task which requires great humility, since we may never truly know the role that we may have played in them. Added to this is the fact that the tangible results are negligible, since we cannot measure the success or the lack thereof of a work that is not our own, but God's alone. This would naturally lead to some frustrations and some sense of futility on our part. But as St. Paul tells us in the second reading today, whatever sufferings we encounter or experience in this life are insignificant when compared with the glory that is to come. And so my dear friends, may God give us the grace and strength to be his rich soil, to persevere in submitting to doing his will so that we can be enabled to obtain the glory that he has prepared for each of us. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, <coughs> maker of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son was adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I await the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, the God of abundance, gives us the word so that we might be fruitful disciples of that word. May that God now hear our prayers. That all members of the church may hear God's word, plant it deep in understanding hearts, and come to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, all the priests, deacons and religious, cultivate the rich soil of receptivity and listening, both in themselves and those they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all the people of the world may have eyes, ears, and hearts open to hear God's word and the strength to live it out. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are poor in things of this world grow in the richness of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us here open our hearts to receive Jesus as the word of God who bears fruit within us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve us during these trying times and their families, those who have contracted the virus, those who have died, as well as those who suffer in any type of pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who pray for this weekend, especially the repose of the soul of Deacon Joseph Buzakas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book and those in our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you send your Son and His Word made flesh to take root in our hearts. Hear these our prayers, that one day we may live with you forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice unto your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly employ you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of 
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just a brief review again of the pattern for distributing communion. The deacon will be in the front distributing communion to those in the first half of the church. There will be a Eucharistic minister who will stand at the break and take the distribution of the Eucharist to those on the second half of the church. <laughs> so if you just come forward, keep your six foot distance, you know how you do that in the grocery store or the other place. Stay six feet back, come up, receive the host, <laughs> step aside to the marked tape, Lift your mask, consume your host, and go back to your seat. And as I say, there'll be a station in front and a station in the back as well. The Archbishop has wanted us to make sure that priests of a certain age don't get themselves contaminated by being involved with the crowd. <clears throat> so I'm going to let the kids take care of communion, and I'll sit up there and make ho look holy. So that's what that's all about.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be, be our, our protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.